In this video, I want to show you how to generate a PWM using the 8-bit timer counter on your Rattiny 85 microcontroller. So this timer counter has two pins that can be used to generate a PWM. It has the OC08 pin and the OC0B pin, which are PV0 and PV1 respectively. So those two pins are the output of your PWM circuit in the uh, AtTiny85 microcontroller. So the way the AtTiny generates a PWM, and uh, it actually has uh, several PWM modes. We're going to be talking about the fast PWM mode. So the fast PWM mode circuit has a sat to the wave and it takes from zero to a max value of counts to get to the top of the sat to the wave and in the setting we will be using that max value is going to be 255 counts but you can actually change that value with other settings so once you have defined your bottom which is zero and your top which in our case is going to be 255 you then select a value between those two numbers to generate your wave. So if for example, I select 50, then what you do is you draw a line through the side to the wave. And if your PWM is a non-inverting one, then you start uh, as with a high value. And the first time that you get to the uh, where your 50 crosses the uh, sat to the wave you just draw a line down and that's where your non-inverting PWM would toggle so since we started at 1 it will toggle to 0 and next time it touches the uh, the 50 line touches the uh, sat to the wave again then you toggle the PWM the PWM again so that will change it from 0 to 1 and so on and so forth so you actually within the uh, fast PWM mode you have two PWM modes you have the non-inverting which starts at 1 and then toggles and you have the inverting mode which starts at 0 and toggles so that is how you can uh, control the duty cycle for your wave by controlling the uh, value between your minimum and your maximum count and the way you control the frequency is so uh, you can select a prescale value so your frequency for your PWM is equal to the frequency of the clock divided by n which is your prescale factor times 255 I mean 256 so we will be using an inverting PWM for our PV1 pin which is OCOB and we will be using a non-inverting for our OCOA pin so like I said you have several PWM modes the way we select the uh, fast PWM mode is by setting the WGM bits which are the waveform generator generation mode bits so my setting is number 3 in table 11-5 so notice that my top which is my max value when I set the bits to 0 1 1 is 255 and my bottom is equal to 0 and you also have the uh, timer flag and it tells you where that flag gets set which in this case for this setting that would be at max which would once again be 0xff or 255 if you want to change your max value like I said in our case that would be 255 you can select this other mode and you can put the value that you want to be max in here or top but then you won't be able to use the uh, OCOA pin for generating PWMs so that's how you select fast uh, PWM mode 
Let's see how you select non-inverting or inverting. So like I said, for my OCOA pin, which is PV0 or pin 5, I have selected non-inverting for my OCOB pin which is PV1 or pin 6 I have selected the inverting mode by setting these bits accordingly and you select the uh, clock the the uh, the frequency of your PWM uh, if you remember my formula that I showed you, you can select your N. So I have selected a scale factor of 64. And since my normal clock speed of the Atani 85 is 1 million hertz or 1 megahertz, then if I put the 64 in the formula, that gives me 61 hertz. So that would be the uh, frequency for my PWMs for both pins. So let's go ahead and check out the code. And I actually don't need this line, so I'm going to delete it. So this is where I set my WGM bits like I said I have selected fast PWM with my top of 0xFF so I only have to set these two bits and the uh, bit that I did not that I do not have in here which is WGM02 would be zero since I don't have it here this is where I have selected non inverting for my A channel and inverting for my B channel or pin. And this is where I select the uh, pre scale factor of 64. And these two values would be this value of 50. So for my A channel, I've selected 50. For my B channel, I've also selected 50. They don't have to be the same. They can be different numbers. So this is how you can calculate your duty cycle for each of the channels. So the waves are going to look the same in both pins, but inverted. Since if you recall, I selected non-inverting non for one and inverting for the other. And also have to make my pins outputs. So if you run that code and connect an oscilloscope, you will be able to see these waves. My yellow line is the A channel, my red line is the B channel. And one thing you can do if you don't have uh, if you don't have an oscilloscope is you can connect a, an LED and just change these numbers, and you're gonna be able to see how the uh, LED's light changes its brightness. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.